Hi, I'm Lachlan Skipworth, and today I'm talking about my piece, Intercurrent. I call it a palindromic reverse cannon, and it's kind of like a modern day version of a Bach crab cannon. The live players play alongside a reversed version of the same thing, but there's quite a few layers. So this video is going to examine those and hopefully let you hear a little bit more in the lush immersive textures. If you're not familiar with the piece, you might want to listen to it once first. There's a link somewhere. But if not, let's dive straight in. Firstly, on the macro level, I'm going to represent the palindromic form for you right here. While the bass clarinet, marimba and piano are playing the piece, a pre-made recording of the piece is going in reverse like this. But let's think about it another way. Here's our double, we reverse it and lay it just a bit earlier and play like this. So you can see the live and reverse versions going simultaneously and I think you get it. But the next layer down is what really excited me when writing the piece. So here we go. Here's the basic pattern used in the work. It's a 10 note pattern which is actually two groups of five but it's played twice. So let's listen. And now let's listen in reverse. Now I mentioned at the start that the tape part is layered just a little bit before the live part and that's so we can get this effect. So you can hear how the live sound emerges from the reverse version of the same thing. That's pretty key to the piece. Let's hear how it sounds on piano. Now, with two live and two reverse voices, I've got four instruments overlapping to create this morphing effect to the pattern. Again though, there's another layer of complexity. I start to introduce imperfections to these 10 note patterns and it really disrupts the rhythmic feel. Have a listen to how I've altered this first pattern. And if we put the piano in two, you can hear how the duple accent are passed between the three instruments. But here's something I didn't tell you. Playing with the notes like this means that it's not a perfect palindrome. So for the record, the arrangement of each of these 10 note patterns is palindromic, but the notes within? I've subtly adjusted them to suit. And a note to myself, this kind of thing makes the music really difficult to memorise. So I apologise to all my performer colleagues. Here's another example of that same effect. You'll notice how the highest notes have usually been the ones that are accent, but in this one it's the highest and the lowest. And I mentioned before that the duple groupings really disrupt the five feel, and if there's any left, it's totally gone when I send these groups of three across the surface of the texture. Okay, so as I said at the start, this video is just a glimpse, hoping that you can get more from next time you listen to the piece. But let's quickly talk about the middle, because putting the piano arpeggios together was so much fun. What you get is the live pianist playing a span of perfect fifths all the way up the range of the piano, and then the reverse piano, timed at the precise moment, 
in the second half of the piece completes those arpeggios by taking them all the way back down to the bottom. And then this, the centre, or the apex of the piece. Those piano arpeggios have been getting faster, frantically overlapping, until they reach the middle of the piece and they tip over and everything starts happening in reverse again. Actually, if you know the piece, you'll know that bit. But I'm going to finish with one bit which is maybe not so obvious. Uh, an example that really touches on the crux of the piece, if I talk about it really honestly. We have to talk about this piece in the context of minimalism, because all the history of repetition and canonic structure is kind of wound up in the work. And I feel that the reverse idea was the entry point by which I, I could say something worthy in this medium. But the performers ask me straight away, is this a minimalist piece or is this a romantic piece? Because it's got these lush harmonies. And I had to ask myself too. So I'm going to give you one final hint and show you that there's these hidden melodies in there. Just short, just brief, but they probably give a, a really honest uh, indication of my intention in writing the work. So have a listen to these and I'm going to let you go back to the work itself to see if you can find them and also have a listen to what they might sound like in reverse and how they talk to their live versions etc. Thanks so much for listening to this video. Uh, happy listening, please do go and listen to the full piece now that you've had this little uh, kind of introduction to the work and I hope to see you again soon.